So, uh, is it time to fire Mike Smith yet? Hey guys, what's going on? James here, and in today's video, we are reviewing the Buccaneers Week 6 29-34 loss versus the Atlanta Falcons, but before I delve into that, I want to announce that I have started a new gaming channel that I am going to be playing games such as Madden, among other games on. I actually just recently got my, uh, my new Elgato for it, so if you want to go check that out, that is going to be down in the description below. But let's not waste any time. The Buccaneers lost to the Falcons 34 to 29. It was exactly what I feared was going to happen. It was a shootout, and it was a shootout that the Buccaneers could not win. It was the debut game of Jameis Winston, the debut game. He actually played in the second half of the week four game versus the Chicago Bears. However, this was his full uh, first game back as the uh, full time starter for the Bucs. And, uh, you know, all things considered on the offensive side of the ball, it went pretty well. When you look at the defense, side of the ball that's when things did not go well at all i want to talk about the offense first because quite honestly that was the uh, the most positive part of this game like i said it was a little bit of a shootout it was Jameis winston's first game back and all things considered he actually did a pretty good job minus the two interceptions he had one of those interceptions was on a bad deep pull to deshaun jackson they still need to work a little bit on the chemistry there you could tell that Jameis was overthrowing deshaun jackson here and there some of it was Jameis winston's fault some of it was the the fact that the cornerback was getting a little bit uh touchy-feely with Deshaun Jackson and kind of stopping him and redirecting him so maybe there should have been a penalty there the point is that you know James Winston minus his two interceptions he did finish the day with four touchdowns 395 yards and was 30 of 41 passing that's a very very good game for James Winston one of the best games of uh, his career in my opinion taking away the two interceptions you can tell that um regardless of who's in at quarterback this Todd Munkin offense has just been producing each and every week and yes there are some plays here and there that don't work out that well and maybe everything doesn't come together like it did in the first two weeks that the Bucks had versus the uh, the New Orleans Saints and versus the Philadelphia Eagles but it's still looking like a pretty good offense I think that this Bucks offense might even finish top 10 or even top 5 in the league in overall yards and points that's actually that's pretty encouraging Peyton Barber actually had the best game of his season yet he had 13 carries and 82 yards and he also tacked on I believe four catches for 24 yards and a touchdown so this was the best Peyton Barber game we've had so far we've all been waiting for the running game to get going and this was the game it was going to happen with guys like Keanu Neal Ricardo Allen Deion Jones and Grady Jarrett all out for injuries with the Falcons this was a very banged up defense and you could definitely tell and I'll get into some more overall offensive yard stats a little bit later on in the video but Peyton Barber took advantage he looked powerful the run blocking was pretty good there but Barber just looked great uh he looked like a wonderful power runner he was running with uh you know just power and poise and getting to the second level and fighting for every single yard so it was a really good thing to see the other thing that i wanted to talk about was all the pass catchers looked good minus a couple of drops and bad timing with guys like mike evans um and deshaun jackson everybody looked good everybody got a little piece of the action here and there oj howard cameron Brait, adam humphreys chris godwin deshaun jackson mike evans you know, all six of those guys got the ball in some capacity. Even Peyton Barber, you know, all, everybody got a little bit of a piece of the ball today, which was a very encouraging thing. The Buccaneers still have a ton of weapons, and it seems like Jameis Winston likes passing the ball around to a lot of them, especially Adam Humphreys and Cameron Bate. I thought they had one of the more impressive uh, games of the day. They were very reliable on third down, and uh, especially getting uh, deep and getting past all the zone coverages and getting in between. Both Humphreys and Bray excelled a whole lot in that regard. I do want to say one thing, and I'm sure a lot of people are upset at this, but I... I'll say, you know, maybe hold off on it. Can Chandler Catanzaro had one missed extra point, and a lot of people uh, are claiming that that's the reason that the Bucks lost. I mean, honestly, even if he had made that extra point, the Bucks still wouldn't have won with a field goal. It still would have been 33-34, to 34, so they wouldn't have gotten the win there. But, um... You know, Chandler Catanzaro, minus that one extra point, he still had a very good game. He was 2 of 3 on his uh, extra points, and he made his one field goal from 35 yards. All of them looked to pretty much go straight right down the middle, which was a very encouraging thing. I guess you could say it was a little bit deflating, missing an extra point right after you score on the first offensive drive, but the offense didn't really seem to um, you know, lose any, any momentum from that, and Catanzaro was fine the rest of the game. So I think maybe hold back a little bit on the, uh, the criticism for Chandler Catanzaro. I think he did a pretty good job um all things considered and still hey he's better than nick folk and roberto aguayo i will never let you guys forget that 
Now we get to the worst part of this game, and that was the defense. Yet again, the defense, okay? I have a lot of stuff written down for this defense, but the first thing that I want to talk about is I know a lot of people are going to say, well, the offense didn't help out the defense that much because they turned over the ball two times with the Jameis Winston interceptions. I want to point something out. The Falcons were forced to punt the ball four times in this game. Two of those times that they were forced to punt were after the Jameis Winston interceptions. In both cases, the Falcons were forced to punt the ball. So no points were scored off of the Buccaneers' turnovers. I just cannot stress that enough. But speaking of the turnovers, the Buccaneers lost the turnover battle. battle uh, zero to two. The Falcons had two turnovers. The Buccaneers had zero. They're continuing this trend of not getting a whole lot of turnovers. I believe they've only had uh, one, interception, one interception this year. I believe it was from Justin Evans. Maybe they've had two or three. I'm not too sure. But the only one I remember right now is from Justin Evans. If there's more, let me know down in the comment section below. But yet, another, another terrible game for this defense. And I'm sure a lot of people are going to shift a whole lot of the blame here and say, oh, well, you know, the Bucks, um, you know, the, the defense was able to force four punts from the Falcons. The Bucks didn't do anything with those uh, punts. I will say this. The Buccaneers scored on three of the four punts that the Falcons had in this game. They scored two field goals and one touchdown. That's pretty good. That's actually 13 points. So when you really break it down, you know, the offense was kind of doing their weight here. The, uh, the Bucks defense wasn't exactly doing much uh, all the things considered but like I said um four punts Jason Pierre-Paul actually had the one and only sack for this team in the first half they weren't exactly getting a whole lot of pressure but in the second half things were starting to get a little bit better the blitzes were starting to work a little bit more effectively and Jason Pierre-Paul was actually able to get one sack in this game he's actually at five sacks right now and it's looking very likely that he's going to get to 10 sacks this year which you know I think he's actually going to get more he might even get 12 or you know 13 who knows he's looking very good Jason Pierre-Paul is probably the most valuable player on this defense right now, all things considered. I mean, if I'm being honest, he's really good. So that's good. Hey, we finally have a pass rusher, but apparently we have nothing else on defense. And that's something I want to talk about, okay? Talk about the second half first, because that's going to be the more um, uh, better version of this Bucks defense. They held the Falcons to 10 points. Good. They actually shut them out in the third quarter. Good. It's actually kind of the exact thing that happened in the Pittsburgh Steelers game where the Buccaneers lost that shootout as well. So it is what it is. But taking a look at the first half, things were not as good, okay? Talking, talking about the first half, it was awful. 24 points given up in the first half. That's kind of a, what a lot of teams uh, have as their total at the end of the game. The Buccaneers gave up 24 points in the first half. And they gave up 416 total yards this game to the Falcons. And keep in mind, the Buccaneers offense had 512. The Buccaneers offense had 100 more total yards than the Falcons offense. And we still lost. What matters here is zero turnovers, bad tackling, poor communication, zero discipline on penalties, and just an overall lack of fundamentals and lack of basics. There was way too many plays where I saw Quan Alexander and Levante David pointing around, trying to figure out what the heck was going on. Then the ball would be snapped, and a big gain would be made either by Julio Jones, Calvin Ridley, Tevin Coleman, Mohamed Sanu, Austin Hooper, you name it. The Falcons players were catching the ball, being wide open, and getting first downs. Matt Ryan finished the day 31 of 41, 354 yards, 3 touchdowns, 0 interceptions. Julio Jones finished the game with 10 receptions and 143 yards. That's insane, but we already know that those guys can be very, very good. The thing I want to point out is the last drive that the Falcons had before the end of the first half. This is what makes me feel in my mind what cost the Buccaneers this game, okay? The Falcons had the ball with roughly, you know, a minute, around a minute left, you know, something along those lines, and they were at their own 25. They went four plays, 47 yards in 25 seconds on this Buccaneers defense. They went 47 yards on four plays in 25 seconds, kicked a field goal, put them up, uh, you know, to 24 points in the first half, and the Buccaneers, if that drive would never have happened that field goal wouldn't have been made the Buccaneers possibly could have only needed a field goal at the end of the game Kanzar was looking good after his first missed sector point maybe he makes that and maybe the Buccaneers could have taken that game into overtime um or actually no they would have won what am I talking about they would have won they would have won the game if that that drive would not have happened now there's a lot of other stuff you can factor in there like Matt Bryant making that insane 57 yard or that ballsy play by Dan Quinn and whatnot but this is what I think lost the Bucks this game because that first half defense yet again 
yet again they put the Buccaneers in a really bad hole the offense had to try and claw their way out of it in the defense yes they forced the Falcons to punt four times and yes the Buccaneers offense took advantage of those punts and were able to score points but when this defense needed to stop the Falcons and needed to prevent first downs they just couldn't do it be it poor tackling poor communication poor coverage you name it the Buccaneers defense probably messed up on it and it really cost this team the game. And I know what's going to happen. I know what's going to happen. Dirk Cutter is going to get on a press conference coming up soon. And he's going to get more questions about Mike Smith and his defense. And he's going to say, well, the, the Buccaneers defense looked very good in the defense uh, in the second half. And I completely understand. Yes, the Buccaneers defense did look good in the second half. But this has been a reoccurring problem where, yes, okay, they might have looked good in one half. But that's only because they dug themselves a hole in the first half. If the Falcons offense really, really, really needed to score points, I guarantee you they probably could have. This, this defense can't stop anything. It's another game where the Buccaneers give up 400 plus yards. It's another game where the Buccaneers give over 30 points. And it's another game where Mike Smith is getting exposed as a really not very good defensive coordinator. And don't get me wrong, I was very encouraged about what I saw on the offensive side of the ball. And a little bit encouraged about what I saw on the second half of the defensive side of the ball. But the Buccaneers can't keep on getting into these shootouts. They can't keep on burying themselves in holes to try and climb out of. You need to have an overall team effort. And the offense was there, the special teams was there to a certain degree, and the defense did not show up for the first half, and it cost this team this game. So moving forward, I, they're not going to get rid of Mike Smith. I think that's pretty clear at this point. I don't know if they're going to make any personnel moves like trading for a Patrick Peterson or trading for a Deion Buchanan or trading for a Le'Veon Bell. I don't think they're going to make any moves like that. I think they're just going to stick to their guns possibly and just try and see. Because at this point, even if you make a high tier personnel move like trading for a Patrick Peterson, trading for a Deion Buchanan or something along those lines in the secondary for this Bucks team, it might be too little too late. Look what happened last year when the Buccaneers added TJ Ward. He didn't have enough time to pick up this defensive scheme they brought him in a little bit too late he had trouble with the defense and he was getting rotated in he got mad he wasn't a pre you know he he didn't like what was happening and then he's a free agent now and he basically contributed nothing to the team I think if we traded for somebody like a Patrick Peterson or like a Dion Buchanan we could see a very similar scenario so moving forward, here's what I want to see from this Buccaneers defense specifically, because I think the offense and the special teams, they're pretty good. That's that's their playoff level units right now. Um, special teams, I think so. I think they're a playoff u a level unit right now, and offenses definitely is. What I want to see from this defense moving forward, honestly, I want to see Mike Smith come down to the sideline. I want to see him come down to the sideline because there's obviously a lack of communication there. If Mike Smith is down there, maybe he can be able to visualize and explain how the defense works a little bit better instead of calling from the booth down to his positional coaches and saying, hey, tell Quan Alexander this, or hey, tell Levante David that, or hey, tell Brent Grimes, Ryan Smith, and MJ Stewart this secondary coach. You know, maybe if he's down there and he can get on the iPad or the whiteboard or whatever they're using nowadays and be able to draw out out certain things and explain things and look them face to face and explain what's going wrong and how to correct it that might be able to go a long way in terms of the overall communication problems that these bucks are having right now because right now a lot of these guys on defense they look lost and if they look lost long enough they're eventually going to have to start losing faith in Mike Smith and his defense and if you lose faith in your defensive coordinator or just overall in your team in general then you're doomed you're doomed and I really don't want that to happen I don't think that's going to happen but it's a scary possibility let me know what you guys think about all this down in the comments section below. What did you think about this game? What do you think about Mike Smith and his defense? What do you think about Jameis Winston and the offensive side of the ball? Did you like Todd Munkin's play calling? Did you like Mike Smith's play calling? What do you think is the best fix for this Buccaneers defense at this point? Let me know. I'd love to hear all of this down in the comments section below. Again, I'm very excited to announce that I have launched a brand new gaming channel. That will be down at the top of the description below as well. Go check it out. I just got my new Elgato. And I'm actually doing a free agent franchise on there where I take a ton of uh, current available N uh, NFL free agents. I put them all on one team, and then I go and I play a season, and it might be potentially more than one season. I'm not sure yet, but let me know what you guys think about all that. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you all enjoyed, and as always, I'll see you in the next video. But until then, and as always, goodbye for now, and go Bucks.